So another uh, very common trap for data uh, science or machine learning practitioners is something that's known as data snooping. And we've talked about it, believe it or not, throughout this course when we said that we shouldn't be looking at the data before we decide uh, which hypothesis set we would be applying, right? So what is this data snooping? Uh, if a data set has affected or impacted any step in the learning process, it cannot be fully trusted in assessing the outcome. All right, what does this mean? Basically, this means or this tells us that data shouldn't affect the process of my uh, hypothesis generation. Now, how, how does that work? Well, we use data in, in for learning, right? So because we use the data for learning, it means we made use of the data to make some choices. So what is the, like, what is the choice that I make using that data? Is to select my final hypothesis, final H or G, by the way, right? And so... Now, if we say that we want to use the same data to assess the performance of my G, right, let's be consistent. So if I want to assess the performance of my G, then the data has already affected the process that generated my, my G, my final hypothesis. So if I'm using it to, again, assess the performance, that means my data has now been contaminated and it's not trustworthy, right? So it's not trustworthy. Why? Because I've already... Like the, the data itself was in the process of selecting G. Now I'm using it again to assess the performance of G. And so this is already contaminated. So if you really want to assess the performance of my G without um, that being unlike reliable on a test set, then I, I need to make use of the, the test set uh, in such a way that it's logged away. It's never, uh, it was never a part of the learning process. And, and of course, we have the theory behind where we linked the performance of the final hypothesis to the data, and we know what choices do when we are learning with data. So that's what data snooping is uh, in general. And let's try to understand that, like where data snooping can come in uh, when we are using some um, real world problems. So this is the problem that's, uh, I think, example 5.3 uh, in the textbook. Example 5.3. So here there is an investment bank that wanted to develop a system for forecasting currency exchange rates. And here is a plot of the cumulative profit and percentage that they were like uh, able to achieve uh, versus the number of days that they did this uh, prediction for. So the number of days, 500 is around like two years. And then uh, this is the cumulative profit percentage that they thought they will make. And so what really happened was this like red curve is showing, uh, is telling us that like the bank had eight years worth of historical data on the uh, USD and uh, the British pound. And they tried to use that data to see if that pattern can be used to uh, predict things. So how did they use this data to predict? Well, uh, they took this data that they had, then they normalized it for a, like normalized it for a zero mean, of course, they normalized it. And then they also did like a unit variance. And then they started developing a forecasting system in the direction uh, of the change, like with time. So for each day, the bank tried to predict this direction, like whether it's going to go up or down uh, based on the fluctuations in the previous 20 days. So this is how the experiment was carried on. And then they did uh, training. 75% of the data was set aside for training. And then the 25% was for a test set. Now, when they tested their final hypotheses on uh, this 25% data that was left out, right? Uh, the the profit that they like found was like high, around like 50%. The cumulative profit was around 50%, which is like the percentage of time getting the direction right, right? So the, that was the accuracy essentially. And then when they actually like implemented that and actually saw uh, the the actual result of the cumulative profit, it was only 22%. And so um, what really uh, went wrong? What is the, the issue that's going on? So a simple explanation of this particular scenario has to do with uh, something that's known as data snooping. So although the bank was carefully like setting aside the training set and then the 25% data for the test set, but if you remember, they did this like normalization before utilizing it for the actual data. And so that normalization to mean and unit variance was done for all of the data. So like the entire data was involved in that step. And then they started, uh, they kept aside 25% of that test data that they had already uh, 
used. So in some way that test set was contributing to this performance of like 50 or 52 percent, whatever that was, which was not like so. So again, like this was data snooping in a way because like your your test set has um, contributed to the choices made by the the final learning algorithm that eventually came up with some hypotheses G, and so it has contributed to the value of the mean and the variance that was used in my initial normalization. So. This is the plot for the cumulative profit on the test set with or without snooping. Essentially, this is what this is showing here. And so you can see that like how snooping resulted in an over optimistic expectation compared to the actual thing that might have happened. All right. Another example is from like predicting the, the stock markets, like predicting different stocks based on historical data. And if you want to see a prediction rule is good or not, we can take like companies, traded companies, currently traded companies uh, for the past 50 years or so, right? And then using that data, we can start predicting uh, for like now or for the future. But if you think about it, like mostly you'll get an excellent performance in terms of the profit. You are inadvertently biasing the results uh, in your favor by picking only the currently traded uh, companies, right? So basically... There is like an element of both, I would say, sampling bias and, and somehow data snooping somewhere. And so that's that's not like we're already looking at the, the, the data and then making our, our choices. And so like we may say that, like, how about I pick only the companies that are traded today? Because if I do that, I'm doing like data snooping. So that's not um, like that's not something that that I would like to do. Right. So here's some of the examples of like how and where data snooping might happen. And so the question arises, like, how like, is there a guideline sort of that can like help us um, not get into this trap? Right. So, yeah, I mean, asking a few questions about like how uh, you are trying to implement your model and implement your uh, entire uh, algorithm and so on can help us not fall into that trap. So, for example, if this this thing comes into your mind when you're uh, actually implementing a model that the data looks li linear. So that's great. Data looks linear. So you've already looked at the data and now you're implementing a linear model. So obviously it is going to work. So the intuition here is that you have looked at the, the data set that you have. And so you have already violated that learning principle, the entire theory that was built on the fact that you cannot look at the data and you have indeed done that, right? So that's that's the first one. The second one is, well, I've tried linear. It failed, right? And so let me try circles and maybe it works. And maybe right, like even circles didn't work. Let me try some something else and then keep keep doing. But the idea here is that if you if you torture the data enough, it will confess something, right? But then what in the theory is falling apart here is that you have like a VC dimension, which is almost infinite because you're just going on and on. And then um the the very the first the second principle of of learning has been like violated here okay uh, how about this one try linear it works so i don't need to try circles so the question that you should be asking yourself is that would you have tried circles if the data was different because now you're saying so i don't need to try circles right so in other words like specifying linear as your hypothesis set right was okay. But here you're saying that you're trying different things. And so these different things are affecting your choice. Like if you, you try linear and because it worked and so you wouldn't try circles, otherwise you would have. So in a subtle way though, but it is like impacting your choice. So if the data in any way is impacting your choice and, 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 and that is like, that is your final uh, selection, then, then there is data snooping involved. Uh, even even to the extent that if you're reading papers, see what, what others did on the data, and so then you're modifying and improving based on what their choices were. And so that is like data snooping in a sequential way by different people. And it is uh, going to impact the relationship that we have developed in theory. So basically, if you think about it, the data, like my data is in fact impacting the final G that I, I chose. Right. So there is like that one choice that I have to make and there is no other way out. Of course, my data is impacting the choice of my final hypothesis from my hypothesis set. And we have accounted for that choice by making sure that we fix the hypothesis set before we look at the data. 
So that's the relation we had that principle in theory, right? And, and, and so, of course, we do pay uh, for that price in terms of the model complexity and the relationship between E in and E out. But then we can keep that in control. With data snooping, we are completely going out of control. For example, in this case, the VC dimension was, is infinite. So I don't know if I can uh, theoretically establish any relationship between what I have and what I want. Right. And another example or another kind of guideline is input normalization, normalizing the entire data and then setting aside the test set. It has already impacted your mean and, and your deviation and so on. So the test set was involved in that normalization in the process of your learning and the process of your selection of your G. And so if that ever happens, that shouldn't be, um, that, that should kind of ring a bell that yeah, data snooping has occurred. All right. So. Like, how can we account for data snooping? Well, a quick question that you should always um, be kind of asking yourself is that if the data were different, could or would I have done something different? If yes, then there is data snooping because you are acting upon like something that's given to you and you're acting upon how the data is. And potentially, like based on that data, you are like uh, making choices and then you're basically contaminating your data. Right. And so because you're like making a choice based on the data, the choice is impacting uh, your um, like final hypothesis. And the choice is eventually uh, making things worse, as you would like want to say. So basically what we are saying here is that we have to account for every choice that is influenced by D. Right. And so this is this is what's happening here. Let's say I have a data and then uh, like these these green boxes are essentially saying, what all choices do I make to get to here? And I have to account for every choice that I make is, is, is what this, this idea is that, yeah, I mean, you begin uh, with, with, with some uh, data set and then you, then you specify this, this hypothesis set and based on like whatever choices, even the choice that of the final hypothesis that we made, we had to account for that. Right? And so the more the choices, the more the accountability and the worse it gets, gets in terms of the, the prediction ability of my G. Right? So account for that. If you have to use the data more than once, keep track of the level of contamination and treat the reliability of your performance in terms of that contamination. Right? Because the, the bound, remember the relationship between uh, E in and E out is impacted by that. So that's the whole point. And so we have to account for whatever choices we are making here. All right, so in summary, what we talked about in this lecture was the Occam's razor, pick a model carefully, simpler is better, now we know why. The second thing that we looked at is the sampling bias, generate the data carefully, so data generation is important or an essential component of machine learning, make sure you train and test from the same bin. If we are taking the data from a different bin and then testing it on a different one, then the obviously the prediction will not be reliable. And finally, handling this. So this is like picking a model, generating the data, handling the data. So handling the data carefully means account for all the choices that the data influence. In fact, when we began talking about the theory, we, we are accounting for the choice that we make based on the data and get the final G. But then as more and more choices, as, as you are like presented with more and more choices, you are worsening your uh, ability to, to say something about like, the data outside or to say something about the general process. So one way of like limiting that choice is to choose H before you see the data, right? Although, of course, you made the choice of your final hypothesis from the hypothesis set that was already fixed before you saw the data. So we do account for that small choice that I make from these, this entire hypothesis set by having that uh, complexity component in, in my prediction, right? But then, yeah, I tried as much as I can not to fix the hypothesis set before I looked at the data. So those are three important learning principles. Whenever solving any machine learning problem, we have to kind of keep these in, in, in mind and then uh, uh, go from there. So with this, I'll end this, this lecture. And uh, most likely in the next lecture, we are going to uh, talk a little bit, of reflect on, on whatever uh, we have until now, and then uh, go from there. Thank you.